Hello and welcome to In the Art Scene podcast, a show that unites creatives from all over the world in sharing inspiration, life stories, business knowledge, and love for art. This show is a part of the San Diego Art Directory, a nonprofit organization serving as an informational hub for all things arts and culture in San Diego County, founded by yours truly. I'm Galena Marcus, and I invite you to explore a new angle of the multifaceted world of arts and creativity. As always, the show notes will be on our website, in theartscene.com. And now, let's get to the episode. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to In the Art Scene podcast. I am, as you may guessed, I have uh, another amazing artist with me today, and we're going to have another amazing conversation. Uh, and I'm actually really excited uh, because I know very, 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 very little about this artist, but I'm really excited to hear her story because from what I heard in our previous uh, short conversation, kind of pre-recording conversation, there is a lot to dig in. So um, Victoria Tara um, lives in Miami, uh, um, Splits her time between fine art and luxury real estate. Ooh. And her art is actually very intriguing because uh, from from the glance, you can see that it's kind of a mandalic uh, um, paintings, but actually it is much, much deeper spiritual output. And I'm really excited to talk to Victoria about that. So Victoria... Welcome to the podcast. Please introduce yourself in in just a few words and we will start with a conversation. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. And I'm very happy to be here with you. Um, yes, I live in Miami. I have been um, involved in uh, real estate for past 20 years in Miami. And uh, I have been painting all my life. And so my art... Um, shows my interest in spirituality and meditation and psychology. I have background in clinical psychology. So it's very colorful. It's very happy, uplifting, I would say. And so I am very grateful to my life that I have been doing what I'm doing. It has been my childhood dream to be an artist. And so I feel like I'm living my dream. Awesome. So I uh, I just I cannot wait because I have so many questions from our previous conversation and the, uh, but I wanted to start uh, a little bit like kind of afar um, uh, from like from the very beginning. You are Ukrainian born and uh, you haven't done fine art uh, back there and you moved to the states when you were about twenty five and like how on earth this whole story unraveled how did you end up uh, being in the states how did you end up being a luxury real estate agent and then picking up on fine art and actually doing really really well with it well um i uh, came to the states yes when i was 25 it was um not planned to be full-time being in the states i actually had a business back in ukraine at the time i had a um fashion clothes boutique believe oh it or not uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay let's let's rewind a little bit um uh, clinical psychology uh spirituality and i think you also mentioned that you were working for uh for the foundation uh, uh the, right. doing the research <laughs> fashion boutique yes and so and the thing happened that as I graduated from university, I had no no chance to speak um, English, basically. And something in me had a strong, strong desire to not to forget to speak English. And for that, because we, we had um, American teachers at the university. And once I graduated, I was working as a psychologist um, for a few years. Then I quit to open my own business because... Somehow, I just wanted to have my own business. And so years passed, and I felt like my English was kind of not really doing well. And I thought, what would I do to um, to um, 
continue speaking English. So I, I applied for um, have like a part time project that involved English. And so I was I, I got the project uh, with the American Foundation um, that uh, eventually they invited me to have some training in the United States. And so, so for months and months, I was involved with speaking English and communicating in English. And so that uh, basically how it started. You know, sometimes <laughs> I'm just, I'm just amazed sometimes how, how, um, and I think artists are just so attuned to, to the universe because this is like time and time again, I keep hearing that story. Something in me just pushed me that direction. And I just, and I just went with it and like, uh, having having a full time business, I just search for a part time position with American Foundation. Like, I mean, instead of you know, like conventionally, you would think like I'm having my growing business and I'm I'm, I'm a CEO and I'm I'm doing pretty well. But something in me wants me to just have a part time position <laughs> where where I can speak English. For <laughs> I know it's, it sounds it sounds quite. Uh, if it was not me, I would not believe it's it's true because it's kind of kind of uh, unbelievable uh, yeah my business was doing really well I had the employees and I had so much free time it was kind of rolling on its own and I thought I, I remember at the time I just got my first laptop um it was late 90s in Ukraine and so it was a big deal and so I could uh, go online it was a big deal too and so so I was so excited about that whole thing and my business was doing well so I've got all the you know financial freedom at the time and I had this like unstoppable desire to travel so I was looking for something that would help me to speak English just to, to practice it the excuse to speak English and so I could go somewhere to travel somewhere because the business was running on its own at the time so and that how so I was like why not I guess when we are so young and innocent <laughs> any 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 crazy idea now as I'm talking about it it seems yeah you're right it's kind of crazy right but this is how it happened and um, it was not really involving me to travel at first but I was excited about it was it was just a very excited exciting project to work with and so and then I came to they invited me for training and the first uh, place I visited was uh, San Diego California yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was a six month uh, contract only so that that how it was and then um, I uh, wanted to continue my education as uh, my a degree in psychology from Ukrainian University has been evaluated in the United States. So I've got a master degree in psychology here. And I always wanted to, uh, it was my love for arts. Like I thought at the time that I wanted to be in interior design. And uh, so with all the credits from my Ukrainian degree in psychology, they took all the general credits. And so I only needed 12 credits to get another degree in interior design, which I was like, oh, why not? Let me get a degree in interior design. So that was the Miami Art Institute I went to get a degree. And then, of course, I got to be in the States. And I got a job in Palm Beach as an interior designer, which was um, very, very rewarding, beautiful Um houses we had to work with and uh, it was an incredible experience to be in um, in um, in that kind of environment and Palm Beach and it was it was it was quite rewarding and so then my story goes that I wanted to have my uh, projects to be done on my own properties because oh. uh, I wanted to I wanted to have my own company again. <laughs> Having all that experience, I was like, well, now I want to have my own um, company and to be doing interior design. And for that, the best, of course, is to have your own project on your own uh, property and do it all the way you see it. Because sometimes working for clients, 
you have to, you have to be kind of compromising with yeah, uh, it's your choices. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's no food. Which, which is which is okay, but you know, I thought as an artist, yeah, I want to present my project. And so for that, how do I buy how do I buy some real estate to do a project for my design ideas? And so that was my first um um kind of step towards real estate. I thought, you know, let me learn how to do, how to buy real estate. Uh, so let me get real estate license. Okay, so I got real estate license. And at the time, real estate was really booming. It was 2004 in Florida. It was just going really well. Uh, so I got, um, you know, sign up as a company. I got my own property. I started doing my interior design project. But at the time, I started, of course, uh, you know, being out there, uh, getting deals in real estate. So it, it just, real estate just took me, <laughs> the big wave of real estate just kind of like smooshed me and took me <laughs> with itself. So I, I just, honestly, I just started making more money than I made with interior design so i still love interior design i still love um working with interiors and fabrics i to me it's it's my heart is still there and so but to kind of like i started getting projects i worked on the project reconstruction and then i was doing general real estate the kind of one step at the time i got more and more involved in in real estate and i moved to miami and that that was my life until um until I got back to art. Just um it just felt like I wanted to pursue my the dream of my childhood and and see what happened. So I started painting. Well, okay. Well let's let's get to that. So uh you mentioned in our previous conversation that you actually wanted to start uh, study art uh back in Ukraine, but it was too far away from your hometown and your father advised you to stay in your hometown so you don't have to go into a dormitory. Uh which for for all of you listening out there who are not you know, uh, Russian and Ukrainian transplants, <laughs> uh, uh, the uh, Soviet and post-Soviet um, uh, environment uh, der- dormitory is not like it's just 180 degrees from American experience in college. So <laughs> really, if you have a chance to stay at home, that's probably the better thing to do. So and this is how you got into uh, psychology study, right? Uh, so so right. you never you never got to get a degree, uh, but you always wanted to. And, and then, right. It like... was, was my dream left unfulfilled because of that whole situation with uh I wanted to go to architectural university, mm-hmm. which was in a big city, just like a hundred miles from where I was. And then our city, we did, did not have a good, uh, like reliable um, architectural university. So yeah, my father was, I was 17 at the time. My father was uh, like, yeah, you know, no way. <laughs> 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 you're at 17, you're going to be living in dormitories. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of um yeah ended up going to psychology which ended up being the greatest uh, blessing it was a um, very um wonderful experience totally opened my mind um and it and self- it feeds your art too now right it's right at the time I was not a lot that was not my intention at all I just wanted to be interior design architect it just when I came to the states uh, first thing, I wanted to fulfill my dreams <laughs> that left was were like hanging unfulfilled. That's why I went to um, yeah, to get a degree in interior design. Uh, that uh, by working and doing my own projects, it kind of got fulfilled. You know, I I felt that um, even though I still love it, it was, something else came up, and yeah, I moved on with real estate. Uh, so, which we don't know. Maybe at some point I'll get back to interior design. It's still my heart still is with uh, designing. It's such a beautiful uh, part of my life. So, well, so 
uh, after all those degrees and successful businesses and all of that, how did you reconnect with your artist self? When did you start painting and, and how this whole thing came came about? Okay, so... Oh, that, that's going to yes. be the juicy story. That, that's, the one, that's the one that we did not discuss in the previous conversation. We left it for the recording. <laughs> yes, it's quite a story. I'll try to keep it not so long. Um, so, yes, well, what happened was that being um, involved in real estate and getting all the degrees, kind of fulfilling all that I felt were my deepest desires and aspirations and goals, um, lucky enough for me, all got fulfilled. And somehow being in the midst of all that success and glory <laughs> of uh, Miami and real estate, and I, I, I've got to buy quite a few investment properties, so I got involved with that. So it was going really well. And with all that said, something inside me was feeling so frustrated and unfulfilled. Like I received everything I ever wanted out there in the world. And yet, what is it in me that is still not what else do I want? And I, I could not think of anything because I, I've got everything that I thought I ever wanted. And so I started going within. So going back to um, whatever I gathered from my psychology studies, I have got into meditation. I started traveling to see spiritual teachers. I went to India. I have got to um be introduced to what I think is the most um incredible teaching that um, we have in modern times, which is a course in miracles. What, what is it? Called, it's called a course in miracles. Okay. I, I've never heard of this one. So I'm I'm, yeah, I'm really <laughs> curious about it. So it 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 is the most incredible teaching. Uh, it's non-dual teaching, but it's it's a book. It's written in the most beautiful uh, English language that consists of three books. One is uh, text and the manual for teachers and the tr like a training. There is a set of uh, meditation, so to say, like exercises for each day of the year. So 365 um, lessons that anybody could do. So it just came into my life and I got into it. And it, and it really shifted my whole perception on everything i've got one morning i woke up with the most incredible uh, experience that I, something shifted within myself that is totally un undescribable but nothing seemed like ever before i was just sitting home being totally blissed out mm -hmm. i could not function much it like it reshuffled all my values all my desires all my Everything stopped and everything that I seemed to be doing before, you know, trying to get things in, out there in the world, it seemed so empty and meaningless, which was scary at the time. I, I had nobody to reflect with, to talk to. It was I was just by myself. My realtor friends could not relate to that. <laughs> My parents could not relate to that. I thought that. I'm going crazy. <laughs> but I, I was like, wow, if this is like so incredibly fulfilling, so incredibly, um, it's just no words for what it was. And I had no idea what it was. And so my life became this journey to finding out what it was. Eventually, it it kind of got, the experience um, got b like back to normal, so to say, so I could... Mm -hmm be like normal but i could never forget what it was like you know in spirituality they call it like relevation experiences or satori mm -hmm. experiences mm -hmm. so i am i think it was something like that that spontaneously just happened to you me. just you just kind of like one day woke up and there's this channel like direct channel with the universe just opened for you and you were like shocked You're like what am i what am I supposed to do with this? <laughs> that that kind of <laughs> experience. The mind was totally challenged because mm -hmm. the mind freaked out in a way that it was like, oh my God, what I'm going to do with it? Because all it ever was trained is doing, 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 doing. Yeah. And so in that experience, there is nothing to do. 
It's just being. It's been, but now I know so many years later, at the time, I my mind just could not grasp into anything. What do I do? It was like no answer. What do you do with it? No answer. And it kept on grasping and crying. So in one point, it was feeling disorienting. Uh-huh. But at the same time, something in me deeply knew but that this is really real deal. This is what the whole life is all about. So it took me a while to integrate. It took me years. I At the time, I stopped doing everything at all. Full. <laughs> it was crazy. I stopped everything. I got into Course in Miracles. Um, to that study, I, it mm-hmm. took me about two years. I barely could do real estate. Everything really slowed down for me. I just got deeply into my meditation. So, so which was very challenging because um, to integrate that kind of experience, it's not... Uh, well, it's, it's, not not, some, it's not something that we were taught ever in our lives right it's like... not not yeah I had to figure it all out and it's something that couldn't be figured out it just had to ground itself in that to trust um yourself in it and so until today i'm still learning i'm and i'm very humbled very grateful for the way it all unfolded and at the time when I stopped everything and I got into my spirit, like deep uh, inner journey, part of it was that I got to go to India, <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, and at the time it just happened. So it's another crazy synchronicity. Um, is that the first my first visit in India? I got straight into Kumbh Mela. Mm-hmm. Maybe, you know it's the biggest the spiritual gathering it's, it's crazy but it's like most incredible thing i first experienced india at the kumbh mela and i had no conceptual understanding what was going on <laughs> with me but it, i think it was the most the best way to go because like my mind couldn't grasp on anything everything was so out there out there but the energy of it was so incredible i felt like my soul my very deepest part of something so the most precious ever was recognizing something most precious that it knew through lifetimes. And so I just stayed there and traveled to it was a month a month mm-hmm. altogether in India. I came back to my <laughs> I, was like, I was like an alien <laughs> falling from the moon. <laughs> I can't imagine. I became vegetarian after that. It just was uh-huh. natural. It just could not, you know, without any concepts or thoughts about it, it was just natural. It's just what just, your body wanted to do. Yeah, right? just my body just was not drawn towards anything by plant-based diet. Uh-huh. And so, and I continued my meditation um, practices after that. However, when I was in India, it was at some point, it was the uh, most auspicious day of that whole Kumbh Mela, where it was like, you know, all these devotees, which, you know, I could, I could understand what they were doing, but they were praying and doing pujas and all different things. I was just there tagging alone just feeling like we're just like hanging out it was so uh, nothing to understand but it was it, it felt really good like it was really cool mm-hmm. and um i just went with it and then at the at some point they had to jump into ganga <gasps> and it was march uh-huh. and it was uh, up in himalayas basically ganga comes north from himalayas north india in haridwar rishikesh like in, we were in haridwar mm-hmm. But it's just right next to Rishikesh. And so Ganga was ice cold. It's just coming out of glaciers in March. Super strong current. Anyway, I had no idea. We just had to jump. So I jumped. And I, and I love water. I grew up by the water all my life. I live here in, you know, where in Ukraine. I grew up by the water too. So I'm friends with water. So I was not like frightened. So I got right into it. And with that, I, as I closed my eyes, and and I was like in the Ganga. I closed my eyes 
and I saw this incredible like circular motion colorful image and I was like what is it and the voice in my head like it was this like some authority voice that said it this is uh your artwork you're going to come to Miami and start painting and it's, it's something that is going to be healing first it will be healing for you but then it will be healing for the world and for those who would you know see that art it will have that energy it will help to heal people but we'll start with you so you have to do it oh uh, I was like, what? <laughs> so I came back to Miami and I bought my first canvas and I had no idea. And I started the sort of like painting in the circle of motion, just like uh, it, it, I saw it in my, in my, I, I still, can, I, when I close my eyes, I, I see that, I see that, I have that experience. I, I see that image. And so here I am 14 years later. <laughs> <laughs> I continue painting and so now I am this is how it started my my artwork even though I studied art as I was a child I, I got formal training in um, traditional art back in Ukraine and I wanted to be an artist but I could not see my signature up until that moment when it kind of all merged my knowledge in psychology my um background in arts all these years of uh, meditation and acquiring spiritual knowledge um and acquiring spiritual knowledge i mean something really simple i just was like what is that um that would make me really happy that was my very simple wish um I was not asking for satori or any kind of like enlightenment. I was like, what is it? I, when I get everything in life, I still feel unfulfilled and something is missing. But I have a glimpses of this deep fulfillment, but it does not last. Like you get your beautiful shoes, you're happy for a moment, and then next day it starts all over again. I want to be happy, so it's permanent. That's how I... That's all I wanted. <laughs> and my life became like burning chamber. Things were falling left and right. It was like exploding people, places, possessions. Um, it was quite a journey. So I stayed with my art. Uh, and of course, I continued uh, being involved in real estate, but um, just to, you know, to um help me to <laughs> to go yeah. back to india and to have my place i minim minimized my um possessions and expenses i made it um, very you know basic um, comfortable and yet so i could have free time and focus on um my you know just to have a empty space in my life so i could sit Mm -hmm. and uh, meditate and um, focus on art and my art comes from that um, practice of stillness when I um, basically have I, I like to say I, I focus on the silence between the thoughts mm, that's beautiful and from that silence it all unfolds this is where the art comes from this is where the paintings um, emerge from, from that silence. And it, to me, it's the most uh, exciting thing I could do for fun. <laughs> you know, sometimes people ask me, what do you like doing for fun? I mean, honestly, honestly, not to sound weird, but if I honestly say it for myself, it's just to sit in silence. This is the most incredible a fun experience and of course I like to do things in the world and I like to travel and go to the beach and you know hang out with my friends and uh, and I still love real estate now it, it the whole thing got taken for me on a different level you know I see it as continuation of my spiritual practice to serve to um to meet people to help them to hold the space for them because you know in real estate could be emotional when they sell their home or, yeah yeah, uh, yeah so yeah. or when so, they buy a new home especially if it's like a, a new a new family right 
Yes, exactly. So for me, it's 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 um it's continuation of my service to you know people around me, and uh, so it so this is how it. It's a wow, short, I, short I, version I, of. <laughs> I, I have I have so many reflections right right now to everything you said, uh, and I hope I will you know gather all my thoughts and will not forget anything I wanted to ask you, uh, but I I wanted just to start by uh, promising to our listeners that we will put link uh, to the books in the show notes. Uh, are they available for purchase? I, I assume, right? Yes, you can, yes, you can of buy course. Them. So, yes, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we will we will put the links. So if anyone is interested in learning everything about uh, cursing miracles, a course in miracles, a course, yes. in, yeah. Uh, so you guys will have a chance to start your own journey, uh, inspired by Victoria's. Uh, <laughs> I uh, uh, I also wanted to ask you if you have. Um, a photo of that first painting of the vision that you had in Ganga, and if I can use it in the show notes as well to to show to our listeners of what it looks like and like the whole this first thing that inspired and started like launched your your um, art practice. Uh, I, I think that would be very special as well. If if you have that, if not, we'll we'll just you know share share the images of your current work, and then it's totally fine. to also say that uh when i look at your work i mean again from the very first kind of a uh, glance when you uh, when you take a look at your work a lot of them have this mandalic shape and uh you, you yeah you kind of see it in the in the spiritual space in the meditation space but uh you mentioned that they are not necessarily uh mandalas and then some of them are actually really uh abstract they're all cyclical kind of like a circle shaped uh some repetitive motions and and uh which which reflects the the meditation process right this repetitive uh cycling right, motion right right this is, yeah. circle is one of the most ancient symbols of yeah. um harmony and healing and uh, protection it has been used in all cultures all, all through yeah. the world yeah. and so um yes they all have the circular motion all my i mean i could call it mandala so i, I you know they tot totally have that uh, presence uh, they're just not classic mandalas by yeah. any tra tradition yeah. they are like i call them like non-denominational like beyond all, all the tradition because in a way they do include all the traditions they use um very archetypal symbols that mm -hmm. uh, come from old like traditions so in this sense it's very much uniting it's like an mm -hmm. universal art that unites all the cultures in in that sense of um of, of prosperity and, and abundance and uh, harmony you know because that was circle was uh, a symbol of uh, protection something that brings good fortune something that heals you know and also unfolding flower petals also. yeah so it's a symbol of actually um, a symbol of the journey of the soul it's like a symbol of the lotus goes uh, from the mud from the, from the dirt, darkness yes. of the of the mud and then to the sun yeah this, and then I, I love that symbol I, ha I have a tattoo a lotus tattoo specifically for that oh. reason because because to me it was it was that you know the miracle that it uh uh it fights the mud it, comes from the dirt reaching for the sun and opens up in this incredible beautiful flower so like the the mud is kind of the you know all the obstacles in uh, in life and everything that muds blurs our vision you can overcome this if, if you're just reaching for sun for light right it's so true and to me it just it, it just, it just the, the most precious for my heart is uh, just thinking about that and it's it's the metaphor of the journey of the soul it's like we come from you know darkness of depression confusion uh ignorance uh, perhaps like uh, not knowing what's true what's not true and then uh, guided by the light the sun of the light of the sun is like the sun the light of true knowledge that we've been exposed to and that knowledge activates that growth towards light and eventually blooms into the full potential 
uh, which yeah. of course is a symbol of enlightenment, yeah. but it could be a symbol of uh, you know full potential in any area of life. So, which yeah. the highest, of course, is the spiritual. It's just so beautiful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I just, you know, it, it, you you were talking, and I just say, I have, I have this mantra in my in my head. Yes, uh, yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. So that's exactly what you're talking that was about. Some, yeah, yeah, lead me from darkness to light. That's yes, exactly. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I also wanted to mention that, you know, when I look at your paintings, especially those that are more blurred, a little bit more abstract, it kind of really reminds me of uh, like when I meditate sometimes or in like during Shavasana, very often it happens, or if someone does Reiki on me, I see the colors and there, there's no shape or anything, but they're kind of like circle shape and 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 I, I see the colors of my chakras and that's like the colors that you're choosing in your paintings and this whole circle environment kind of really reminds me of, of what I see when I meditate I don't yeah. do it as much as you do unfortunately <laughs> I, but but now I'm I am Boy, maybe 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 one day <laughs> maybe one day and you know what I actually I wanted to make another comment because the the previous time that we we had a conversation you mentioned something really funny that you live in Miami and you're uh, a painting from your spiritual experiences and uh, people think that you are a cuckoo and it's a completely woo-woo and you don't fit in the in the you know Miami environment because people are more m like materialistic and uh, and I said well you will fit in San Diego right away because that's you know that's how people are here uh, but now uh, when you describe that voice telling you that you are here to paint because it's healing and at first it's going to be healing for you and then it's going to be healing for for others i'm like with all things that are happening right now in the world specifically in florida i think that you're in the right place because that place needs healing a lot uh so yeah, yeah I mean, but, but, I, I, but we will be happy to have you in san diego <laughs> <laughs> well i would I, I love san diego guys i have the best memories of it and I love the community and the vibe of San Diego. I would love to 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 be back in some ways, especially in both my art. I, I I would love that for sure. And Miami, I mean, I I love Miami. I don't have uh, much um, judgment over you know. It just it is what it is. I am um, looking for the gallery uh -huh. to represent me. Uh, it just I have been having some comments that it's just not a typical kind of art. So what, why wouldn't you open um, your own gallery? I mean, you're you're <laughs> you're a sophisticated businesswoman, and you're in real estate. Come on, you can do this. Well, I just want to focus on art, like as much as I can. That that's been my intention. So I really want to dedicate my life to to that. So even though I, I, I love business and I've been in business all that many years, I feel like now I'm at a point in my life there where I just want to focus as much time as I possibly can. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a, I, mean I, I still um, feel that there is a perfect space for me just um, going to present itself. So I'm not, um, you know, Miami. Miami is a beautiful place. We have ocean. We have now like the most international community. It's such a melting pot. So yeah. Well, San Diego is kind of like that too. Well, I guess so, the cold. But, but, but we're we're <laughs> but we're a little bit more woo woo here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's fun in the way that um, Miami keeps me. I feel like Miami grounds me in a way that uh, otherwise I would like fly away. <laughs> <laughs> they said whole real estate um it keeps me grounded so i i use it as a way to integrate myself to um otherwise if you leave me alone i'll just uh, fly away with my art <laughs> 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 which would be nice <laughs> oh okay so um 
uh, I I also wanted like uh, while you were talking, I was reflecting, and it was uh, I I don't know if it's a coincidence or not. In the last week or so, I've been really into learning about the human design, uh, and I don't know if you you probably know about that concept, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So if you guys don't know uh, what the human design is, it's kind of like the intersection between science, spirituality, astrology, numerology, um, all kinds of things, and it, it's it's uh, to uh, show you uh, where, like how how you naturally, how your body and spirit naturally operate, so you can be aligned, and like everything you you said, like, I, I honestly, I like I knew that there is a story, and I and. I, I knew it. I, I did not expect to hear what I heard. <laughs> and it was, it's the most amazing, it's the most amazing, uh, magical uh, story, like, like, in top three, I've had on the podcast for sure. Um, and I, it kind of made, made me think that you uh, are naturally aligned. And this is how things are just unfolding for you, because you, you have that, uh, into intuition on how to get connected with yourself with the universe and and uh, you know just just trust into the experience and and go with the flow and and you know just be successful every every step of the way and not not because uh, that's what you crave or desire, but because it's a next step that leads you to to the next step to the next step to the eventual um, uh, you know, findings of of yourself and that happiness that you've been craving. Because everything you said from from going to a traditional art school when you were a, a schoolgirl to learning psychology to uh, being versed in business to wanting to travel and speak English, uh, finding the opportunities here and there, building the new business, getting into the spiritual learning and experience, and and then everything that you have done kind of creates that puzzle that that brings you to this moment, to this realization, and to the ultimate uh, you know, service, like you said. Um, so yeah, I think it's this, this is this is just this is just beautiful. This is absolutely beautiful. I uh, oh, thank you. Uh, and I, I I just wanted to invite you like right here on the podcast. I don't know if this podcast is magical, but that's that's where universe let me uh, as as a as a projector. I am a collector of stories, and uh, whenever I have a manifester on on my podcast, and I feel like you are one of those manifestors. <laughs> I, I don't am, know. Actually. You are okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, you're good. <laughs> you know, I it, it's been a week, so maybe that's something for me. Maybe I should go and learn more it's about humans and get trained. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I'm giving you a platform to manifest that uh, um, that space for you for your art to be represented, and you know, just uh, if if there is a gallery, and not only in Miami, I'm not. I'm not saying that you're limited geographically. If anyone hears this and is interested in uh, presenting uh, Victoria's story and healing art in your space, I invite you to connect. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. I feel like I'm at the point where I, even though I do a lot of work as commission work and I um, I am collaborating with online galleries as well, which has been quite uh, good. You know, they've been selling my original work as, as well as um, prints. But I would just love to have a physical gallery. Just I feel that's my heart's desire to have um, a physical gallery somewhere in the world <laughs> where I could, uh, people could come and see the original art just like that. And I could, um, I even have an idea to have may like maybe mini talks or workshops uh, to do with it that I could uh, talk about um, meditation and we could have some kind of maybe group uh, meditation. It could be part of it, could be part of the presentation, it doesn't have to be, it could be just traditional, you know, contemporary gallery space. So we'll see what unfolds. So I feel like that's my next uh, destination yeah 
Yeah, and I and I also think that it's not only to see your art, it's to feel your art because I'm pretty sure that uh, when you are in the physical presence of it, it it reflects all the energy that you put in it. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. There is yeah. uh, there is nothing like being in front of it uh, in person for sure. Well, awesome. Okay, we are almost yeah. at the top of the hour. I, I, like I predicted, this is this is perfect amount of time to explore a lot of things and and get our listeners uh, familiarized with you and your story. And again, everything is going to be in the show notes, including the ways to contact Victoria if you want to represent her. <laughs> so, so in the few minutes that we have left, you have... Uh, like you have the floor, uh, uh, tell people how to find you. Um, we will copy everything in in the show notes, all the links, all the uh, all the references for the books will be there. Um, but you just you know verbally say how to find you, where to find you, where do you exist online, and you know anything else you want to plug, plug away. <laughs> well, um, I would love to be in touch with you. I have a website, victoriatara.com. So you could uh, contact me through my contact page there on the website. I offer a commission artwork. So basically I could create, um, I love creating um, the custom artwork for a person, for a space, for a family. I had, I had amazing stories about what happened. Some magic, magic happened when the... Okay, I'm going to uh, have you back on the podcast with them. <laughs> So that that's quite a very miraculous what happened. So I'm I I love those projects. So also for any kind of holistic spaces, I think it will be really well. Like I would create, I would love creating art for um, holistic spaces, yoga spaces, any kind of meditation related spaces, or just private residences. It just it just very very valuable addition to to the space <laughs> would you would you do a mural um i would consider that it's not been my experience so far but i, I i'll be i would be totally open to to that possibility yeah <laughs> awesome victoria thank you so much for first of all thanks so much for reaching out to me uh, uh and you know Pitching your story, uh, and that's for everyone who who uh, resonates with anything you hear in this podcast, and you have a story to share. You can reach me on on Instagram at in the art scene uh, with underscore between, uh, but it just you just search in the art scene, you will find it, or or hashtag in the art scene, you will find it, uh, or in the art scene dot com. There is a contact form also if you want to reach out to me, uh, or in the art scene at gmail dot com. I also so I check that email uh, every day. So uh, if you want to be on a podcast, I I welcome uh, everyone. So far, I, I haven't turned away uh, any artist, any creative. Uh, and that that has been kind of my blessing because sometimes I just jump into those kind of conversations without knowing anything. And like, hey, I related to one of the stories in your podcast and I want to be on your podcast. Like, sure, let's record. And then every single time I'm telling you magic happens. Every single time. This is why I keep doing this. Guys, I, I pay for this podcast myself. <laughs> this is just because... The amount of inspiration I'm getting from every guest, and I've had guests from all over the world. So I, I again, I invite you to reach out to me as well. And Victoria, just go go and check the show notes for this episode. Okay, everything is in there, and you you got to You got to do it. You got to check out her art, and yes, represent her. Two galleries, three galleries. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm i'm not a manifester but i'm a <laughs> I, I like to think that we're kind of combining our energy right here to make things happen so <laughs> yes it's, it's gonna happen thank you so much for a beautiful interview and the, the fabulous work that you do i really appreciate it and um uh, wishing all the best to our listeners for them to attain that place of uh, happiness that lasts eternally forever beautiful beautiful thank you so much victoria and we'll see you again on in the art scene 
Thanks for listening to this episode of In the Art Scene. Show us some love by sharing it with your friends and giving it a raving five star review wherever you listen to your podcasts. By doing this, you're supporting my nonprofit organization called San Diego Art Directory on its mission to make San Diego a new cultural destination. To learn more, visit san diego art directory.com and in the art scene.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Have an inspiring day. I will see you next time in the art scene.